The Detroit Tigers take three from the White Sox this weekend, and we have Ty Madden's Major League debut on Monday. we got a couple other injury updates and roster moves for you as well, all today on Locked on Tigers. You are Locked on Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Monday, August 26th, 2024. Thank you so much for making Locked On Tigers your first listen. Every single day, we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Supply House. Supplyhouse.com is the reliable way to get parts fast. Shop for your next plumbing, HVAC, or electrical job and get fast shipping from coast to coast at supplyhouse.com. Welcome in. Welcome all. Hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. Happy Monday. The Detroit Tigers won three straight ball games over the weekend against the Chicago White Sox in Chicago. They won 5 to 2, 13 to 4, and 9 to 4. The Tigers' record quiet has not quietly if you listen to the show every day, but has become one game under 500. The Cats are now 65 and 66. Look, the White Sox are awful. Okay. That is a really bad baseball team. Um, all three games, especially games one and three, uh, were actually close, like a, a decently late into the ball game. Game one, I, I think, was tied or a one or two run game, you know, heading into the final three innings, uh, Sunday's game, the Tigers were losing at the halfway point, right? Came out ahead, obviously with a big win. Um, but, but the White Sox are just so bad. Uh, they, they're 31 and a hundred. It is August 25th and they are 31 and a hundred. That is, that is mind boggling levels of of not good you have one more game against the chicago white Sox today monday as you're listening to this it'll be ty madden's debut with one of the youngest lineups in baseball to get to 500 we ball baby we ball well, vibes are high that that that's a lot of really fun stuff all together and, and that is what these th this last you know, six weeks, these these last few weeks of the season are all four. Playing some, giving some people some opportunities, playing some kids and seeing what we have in 2025. And it is translating into some really fun baseball for your Detroit Tigers. So what went right this weekend? Thankfully, a lot. Uh, again, the, the White Sox are not good. It would have been very frustrating to come on here and talk about, you know, bad baseball being played by the Tigers. Had that happened, but it did not. So, uh, again, this is a very young team, and even though the opponent is who it is, I'm still glad they took care of business and beat up on a team that they were supposed to. Like, young players are inconsistent. We've been talking about that in the front office, has been talking about that since March, since February, Right. And, and we saw that at times. Uh, again, we are we already talked about kind of the ebbs and flows of the games already a little bit. But at the end of the day, they walked away from this weekend with three wins and none of the final scores were very close. And that is absolutely fantastic. That is great. Uh, individually, Colt Keith, probably the, the highlight of the weekend offensively. I think that's probably fair to say. He was absolutely phenomenal. I had a hit in every ball game, had multiple hits on Saturday and Sunday. Home run on Saturday, three for four, I think, on Sunday. Absolutely great. And, and th those numbers are now skyrocketing. You know, his season numbers, that OPS is, is slowly kind of trickling into the mid-700s. If he could end you know, uh, uh, with a uh, above league average OPS and truly have, you know, uh, a number that's around 730 to 750 by the end of the season, that would just be phenomenal given the first six weeks of his major league career 
this season and how poorly they went. So he has really turned it around in a big way. We talk about his approach all the time, right? And how I think that there's a next step to what he's doing currently. And we could talk about that in the off season, but as like a first, uh, a, a first stint in the majors and a first season to have the approach he has offensively, I think is, it is really beneficial. And I think he's doing it really well, right? Like he's all of the, the velocity he faces to the outside part of the plate. He's just slapping the other way and anything that's off speed on the inner half of the plate, he's crushing and trying to do damage on the beautiful thing about his home run. Aside from the fact that it was the first home run he's hit in almost a month. Um, it's first home run, I think since July 27th, it's, it's very quietly been a while. Um, but, uh, the, the thing that makes me so happy with the performance this weekend, aside from just the box score numbers are the home run he hit was on a fastball outside. And we've heard so much about how he's not really trying to do a ton of damage on fastballs to the outer half of the plate, right? Like he, he's really just trying to, to, to put those into the opposite field, get a single or a double out of it and, and take what the pitcher gives him. So getting, uh, I think it was 95 mile an hour fastball up in a way and crushing it, absolutely destroying it to dead center well over 400 feet there um, is, I, I think, a fantastic sign that he is continuing to evolve and, and develop and make adjustments. And I think that that was really my biggest takeaway from his very, very, very great weekend. Parker Meadows continues to look great as well. I'm so glad he's getting opportunities in the leadoff hole. Um, I, I think he looks fantastic. Saturday, he got into the lineup as well against a lefty starter. Played the entire game, right? Just wrote it out. But uh, And I think the, the start, I think Bush only went three innings. So I, he didn't get a ton of ABs against him. But the fact that he was in the lineup, he hit sixth instead of leadoff. But like he he's hit six plenty this year. Um, against the lefty, I think was... What was was great, and he walked away from that ball game with uh, getting on base a couple of times. So um, very, very solid there, had a hit in that one. And his season stats, he is now up to a 225 average and a 715 OPS. And I know when I say those, you know, if I said those out of context, you'd probably be like, wow, that's not very great. Why are we bragging about that? He's another guy. Considering how awful his numbers were the first two months of the season, really just pre-demotion, period, uh, to have him have an opportunity to end this year at being considered a quote-unquote above-league average hitter in the eyes of OPS, and, and again, that average has climbed a lot as well, it, it is nothing short of, of incredible. So want to give him a lot of credit. His mechanics are much different, and uh, yeah, he, he, those holes that were in the zone the first stint, we talked about fastball low and away, spin low and in, Etc. Like those holes are are closing, and he he hit a fastball the opposite way this weekend. Like he is he is slowly but surely making adjustments and improving as well. So that was great to see, and then continues to be an absolute menace in the outfield and on the base paths. Had one first to third this weekend that nobody else on the team goes first to third on, and that is why one of the many reasons why we love Parker Meadows. Uh, let's keep the ball rolling here. Got a lot more that went right this weekend. Then we'll talk about the few things, not very many, that went wrong. And then stuff where we will talk about Ty Madden's Major League debut. We'll get to all of that right after this. Got to talk to you all today about our friends over at SupplyHouse.com. Get supplies from the site that is made for the skilled trade, SupplyHouse.com. SupplyHouse.com is the reliable way to order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical products online. Their easy-to-use website is packed with helpful resources, and their latest product info can help you get the job done right. Shop a complete inventory of over 200,000 parts from over 400 top brands, and get your order delivered right to your door with fast shipping from coast to coast. If you need help with an order, get expert support and industry-leading service from the friendliest folks in the business, and talk to a real person every time. Pros in the skilled trades can get a competitive edge by joining SupplyHouse.com's free Trade Master program. Every Trade Master gets access to a dedicated phone line, free shipping, and discounts on every order. So join the thousands of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership at SupplyHouse.com slash TM and order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from anywhere with just a few clicks at SupplyHouse.com. 
All right, everybody, welcome back here. Segment two of Locked on Tigers. Appreciate you all for tuning in as always, making us your first listen every single day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day. We will, of course, be back tomorrow recapping game four against the White Sox, which is also Ty Madden's debut, as well as anything else surrounding the Tigers organization. Also, after you make us your first listen, make Locked on MLB with host Paul Sullivan, a.k.a. Sully, your second listen as he provides daily national expertise with his trademark humor to get you ready for the MLB playoffs here in the dog days of summer. Again, prepare for the Falls Classic with Sully over at Locked On MLB. Available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So talking about what went right this weekend, let's just hop right back into it. <laughs> Got him. So talked about Colt Keith, Parker Meadows, uh, Riley Green and Kerry Carpenter, I think had pretty solid weekends. Carpenter with a big day on Sunday as well, uh, just continues to impress me with the amount of adjustments he makes going forward. And uh, yeah, Riley Green, I know some people were worried about his slow start. Um, I think that he has put that behind him, had a pretty solid weekend, needs to lift the ball to the pole side, stuff we usually talk about. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not worried about Riley Green. Andy Abanez crushes left-handed pitching. If you follow me on on Twitter or X or whatever the heck it's it's called these days, um, we we often I I post anytime Andy Abanez does anything against against a left handed pitcher, uh, Barry Bonds's stat line from his ridiculous what was that two thousand four or zero four oh one, um, where he had the I think it was a one the seventy <laughs> whatever home runs and the eight fifty slug. And uh, that's just how I feel every time Andy Abanez is in the batter's box against a left-handed pitcher. The dude just does nothing but crush lefties. And I think that that is awesome because he was given zero expectations when he joined the Tigers at the beginning. What was that beginning of last year, offseason before last year? And it's just turned into such a weapon, Right. Is he a guy that you want to start every single day at second base if you're like a deep contending playoff team? Probably not. But he doesn't pretend like he is that. He knows his role. He prepares for his role. He knows that he's going to face a lefty anytime that one is put in the game. And he goes out there and does damage nearly every single time he's put in that situation. It's incredible. It's very impressive. He's played solid defense at multiple positions. He's played some outfield this weekend. I absolutely adore Andy Abanez. I, I can't say enough good things about him. And I think that that's a, a, a nice you know tip of the cap to the front office for bringing him in because th this guy has legitimately become like an, a, a, a legitimate weapon for this team uh, and, and knows his role and executes it incredibly well. Shout out Andy Abanez. Uh, the starting pitching this weekend had a bullpen game on Sunday, obviously, but we did see two starting pitchers, the only two in the rotation currently, uh, on Friday and Saturday, Cater Montero and Tarek Skubal. Both of them go five innings and give up fewer three or fewer runs. Skubal gives up three. Montero gives up two. Skubal ends with eight strikeouts. Montero not quite at the Tarek Skubal level of eight strikeouts. I continue to be impressed by Montero. I I, I have been a, a believer in him for a while. I still think that, you know, ultimately he might end up being a reliever, but I, I think that the stuff plays really well as a starter. I, I really do. The We talk about the curveball slider combo all the time, but the biggest thing I've seen in his development this season at the major league level has just been fastball command. When he is locating his fastball correctly, the entire outing is different. And we've seen him struggle uh, plenty, and we will probably see him struggle again before the year is over. He, he is, is inconsistent on the mound with his command, but when he is hitting his spots with the fastball, it sets up everything else. And uh, I am I am unbelievably impressed with Cater Montero. And then Tarek Skubal, not the greatest start in the world, but uh, first pitcher I in the American League, at least, if not in baseball, they hit 15 wins. Going to push for a 20-win season. Um, yeah, like I, I'm not worried. Fine. Like he gave fine. He gave up three runs, struck out eight, uh, only went five innings. They are, the coaching staff has mentioned they're going to watch his innings the rest of the way. I don't have an issue with that. Uh, currently this dude is like a minus 1500 or 2000 on FanDuel to like win Cy Young. 
I, like, I, I don't think that him only throwing five or six innings and outing the rest of the way, or even if it's not the rest of the way and it's just the next few starts, is going to, like, completely screw over his Cy uh, Young chances or whatnot. And that, I think, is a big priority for Scooble and for this coaching staff and this team and for Tarek, obviously. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 some people freaked out about it. I really don't care. Like, that's – that you know, as long as he's pitching more than, like, three innings, I don't want him to, you know, just not pitch – um, but it, I have no issue with him going five or six the rest of the way if uh, if that's what they think needs to happen to maintain his health. And it's not going to cost him in the long run. He's still going to end with almost 200 innings. That's a full season. He's been great. He will continue to be great. Tarek Skubal rocks. Bullpen, solid this weekend. Again, the, the lineup they're going up against is absolutely dreadful. But thought that it it was good to see and nice to see the bullpen have a really solid weekend because we have not, I don't know, we've been saying it, I guess, a little bit more in August, but in June and July, it was really shaky there. So seeing them turn the corner is nice as well. What went wrong this weekend? I only have two names on here. Uh, Bo Brisky struggles again, uh, got popped as the opener on Sunday. Now, again, the Tigers were able to come back and still win pretty comfortably. So, uh, no harm, no foul there, but <clears throat> it was, or it, it continues to be something to keep an eye on. Brisky just can't get a few good outings in a row under his belt. Like he will go out there and he will throw two, three outings where you're like, okay, I think he's maybe figured it out. And this is looking a lot better. And then boom, he gets rocked. Like he he tried to offer a curveball a little bit on Sunday, got kind of smacked around a little bit. Um, the changeup got hit. That's never a good sign because that's, I think, his best pitch. Like just a, a, a weird, a, a weird thing uh, with him. And, and, and this this season has not gone as well as I think he had hoped, and, and I think that I had hoped going into the season. I had pretty high expectations of Brisky going into this year. That being said, I, I think that this has also been a weird season where he wasn't expecting to get utilized in this like opener role too terribly often. And and I think that. Um, you know, the the amount of changes that this bullpen and that the usage of these pitchers has seen in the second half of this year with only two healthy starters has kind of thrown everybody for a loop. So we'll see what he does in his next true relief uh, appearances. Um, but uh, yeah, another not great outing for Bo Brisky. And then Spencer Torkelson, not trying to just pick on one guy. It's not like Torkelson was the only guy that didn't have a great weekend, but a lot of people had really good weekends. Uh, Torkelson went two for 14 with a walk and six strikeouts. So did reach base three times. Um, but uh, yeah, two for 14, not awesome on paper. It, it, it's it's decision-making still for me. Uh, there's, there's two things that I, I still think I, I haven't seen drastic differences from the first time he, uh, you know, pre getting sent down earlier in the year. And one is the decision-making um, there are still just pitches that catch way too much of the plate that he spits on and then pitches that catch none of the plate and are way outside that he chases. Now, like in general, he still takes like a, a decent amount of pitches that are balls and whatnot. It's just, I don't know. I, I feel like sometimes he still just goes up there and it's just like, this is a take no matter what. And it's like, well, it's a full count. Like you can't do that. And uh, I, it's just, it's confusing sometimes. Um, I still think he should play every day the rest of the season. We got to see what we got in him. I'm in full support of him playing every single day from here on out still. Um, but uh, yeah, just a little bit of inconsistency still. And then it's still the slider low and away. Um, I think that he really wants to do damage on fastballs, which is good. He should want to do damage on fastballs. But um, because a slider low and away to a righty from a righty looks just like a fastball up and in until the last possible second. I think he gets burned on sliders low and away a lot. Now, to his credit, I think he's made contact with them a little bit more the sense the first time he got sent down, which is a step in the right direction, but a lot of them have been like foul balls or line drives to the third baseman instead of hits. And so if those translate to hits at some point, then that's great. That means that he is making adjustments and is going to take a step there, hopefully in the right direction. But um, that that continues to burn him. He struck out a couple of times this weekend on sliders low and away, had a few swings and misses on him still, um, just continues to kind of be an Achilles heel for him. Okay, let's talk stuff. This was a good weekend, and hopefully we can transition that into a really good Monday with Ty Madden 
on the bump. We'll talk about that as well as some injury and, and other roster moves, news and notes. We'll talk about all of those right after this. Got to tell you all today about our friends over at FanDuel. Look, you've heard us talk about FanDuel a lot, right? America's number one sports book. Well, we have something a little different for you today. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then, with a YouTube TV-based plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to download America's number one sportsbook. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Third and final segment, Locked On Tigers. Appreciate you all for tuning in. As always, let's talk stuff. Okay, on the field, Tigers take three of three from the worst team in baseball, one of the worst teams I've ever seen. Um, off the field, we got some news and notes to go over. Javi Baez goes to the injured list. It's the same back injury that he has been on and off the IL from uh, for most of his Tigers tenure and certainly a lot of the last eight or nine months, uh, dating back to even you know February. Um, that was a big concern. People talked about the back a lot going into camp. It was, oh, the back feels better than it ever has, whatever. Okay, well, he was on the injured list multiple times this year because of it. And I don't expect that to change. He's on the wrong side of 30 in terms of, you know, an MLB career. And uh, I would expect that we're just going to have to anticipate this for as long as he is a Tiger, which who knows how long that's going to be either. I don't think there's any chance he plays out the rest of the contract. It's just a matter of of when there's also maybe a decent chance that he's done for the year. Um, I don't know that they're going to be chomping at the bit to get Javi back out on the field, um, especially if Winsiel Perez can make it back this year. I don't know if he will. I think that there's a pretty decent chance he's done for the season as well, but he started running this weekend. So I don't know, maybe a, a, a punter's chance there. Um, but uh, I don't know, like you're basically choosing between getting, giving ABs to Javi or Ryan Kreidler the rest of the season. I, I don't know. I, I don't really have too much of an opinion either way on that, whatever the organization wants to do, but he's got to get healthy first. And I don't know, notoriously, not a doctor, not sure how long that's going to take. Um, I would expect we're going to see a lot of Trey Sweeney the rest of the way as well. And I love that. That is something I'm very pro. I would imagine that righties is going to be Trey Sweeney. Lefties is going to be a lot of Ryan Kreidler. And uh, that's just going to be the shortstop position the rest of the season. Sweeney had a couple of knocks on Sunday as well. Casey Mize been another rehab start this weekend as well. He's almost back. He literally can't come back for another week still until August is over. Um, but uh, there's rumors that maybe this was his last rehab start or he only has one more. We'll see what happens there. But I uh, had a lot of strikeouts, a lot of swing and miss in his most recent outing down in Toledo. And then Alex Fiedel moved to the 15-day injured list with a right shoulder strain. He comes back from the paternity list and immediately gets put on the IL. And uh, today, Monday, Ty Madden. And imagine it's going to be for uh, for Gunther, Sean Gunther, who was called up for Fiedo's paternity stint. is probably going to be the odd man out, but we'll see what happens. It could be, I guess, uh, a handful of guys in that bullpen. No matter who it is, that, that's going to be the corresponding move. Ty Madden will make his major league debut on Monday. I absolutely love this. Uh, the auditions continue for this team, and that is amazing. Uh, we've talked about Madden a few times lately. And I have voiced some concerns with Ty Madden's season. And I think that those are, I think, pretty justified. He's got an ERA of about eight this season. Uh, we, But in the same breath, we've seen a lot of guys in this organization over the last couple of years have really high ERAs and then get called up and end up being better than expected or better than their AAA ERAs. Uh, Reese Olsen, Miguel Diaz. Uh, honestly, a lot of relievers, most some of which are in the bullpen right now, <laughs> Salmons, Hanafi, uh, Herder, right? Like those guys you can kind of throw into that conversation. Also, some of them actually had pretty decent seasons in Toledo. Matt Manning was a guy when he first got called up, had a really high ERA, certainly was not 
that bad in the majors. Cater Montero, even to an extent, I know his ERA is still a little bit inflated because of the rough start to his career there, but his major league career, I should say. But like we have a handful of guys who uh, who, who are kind of in that boat. Now, an eight ERA is very high, right? That is That is still, no matter how you slice it, Still very high. If we look at the player, Ty Madden, lately, um, lately his strikeout numbers have improved a lot, especially over the last four, I think it's exactly four starts. They've improved a lot, and the walk numbers have gone down a lot. They talked about this on the broadcast on Sunday, too, so credit to Bally for addressing that and pointing that out. Um, but, like, this dude has talent. This was a guy that was a projected middle first-round pick coming out of Texas in his draft year a few years ago, the stuff is good, right? And and he just happened to fall to the Tigers. Was it the comp round? It was either the comp round or the very, very beginning of round two, um, but just barely fell outside of the first round and the Tigers picked him up. Um, yeah, the, the stuff is really good. He's just wildly inconsistent. And, and there's a few things that go into that. I don't just mean like in general, you know, the stuff is consistent every single pitch he throws or anything like that. Um, the, the biggest thing with him is his fastball specifically is just unbelievably consistent. And, and that's like a start to start thing. I have seen Ty Madden's fastball over the last two years be an absolute meatball. And I have also seen it be quite literally his best pitch and dominate hitters and, and lead to fantastic outings. I have no clue what to expect from him there in that regard because I have seen so many different versions of Ty Madden and, and in his minor league career. I also think the White Sox debut is probably very intentional. Uh, hey, let's throw him out there against a 31 and 100 team and see if uh, he, he can do – I mean, that used to happen to the Tigers all the time, right? In 2022, I feel like we face like 87 – rookies and and people making their debut or like oh they were off the injured list guess who we're facing right because you just knew that they were going to have a decent day uh, I think that that's probably somewhat intentional with Ty Madden as well one of the biggest things I want to point out with Madden and this is something that a few of our beat writers have pointed out and made public as well is that this is another guy that would be rule five eligible if he wasn't added to the 40-man roster this winter so the front office wants to see what they have with him. And that is beautiful. That is literally what the rest of this season is for. That is what the remainder of the 2024 year should be dedicated to. Finding out what we have in, in players that are going to give us roster decisions this winter. And that is exactly what they're doing with time add. And here he is going to get added to the 40-man roster, obviously. And with that, he will be protected from the Rule 5 draft, assuming they want to hold on to him. So uh, I, I'm really excited about this. He mostly throws fastballs and sliders. Um, he does have some other pitches that he has been trying to develop. Um, has kind of like a cutter or like a, a lesser slider in his arsenal. Also has like the splitter changeup type of, of pitch that has been good at times, but also very inconsistent. Has been really bad at times, too. Um, the rest of the way, he will and should start. He should be a starter the rest of this season. But I, there is extreme reliever potential here, which is not bad if he ends up being a good one, right? But th that is something that we all have to keep in the back of our heads here um, because his two best pitches are his fastball and slider, and the fastball is inconsistent. So when you have a player with that profile – you can come to the conclusion very easily that the bullpen is going to be best fit for him because he can max out his fastball, which would make it a lot more consistent. And fastball slider is just a very common uh, duo with relievers today, especially, again, if you can get that fastball into the mid or even upper 90s, which he's done very inconsistently. Sometimes it's 93. Sometimes he can you know, hit 96, 97, and you're just like, okay, I don't really know what's happening. But for now, he's going to be a starter, and that is great. That is exactly what I think he should be, and uh, I think he should be a starter the rest of the season. Let's see if he can impress. I'm, I'm really excited for him specifically the rest of the way because this is a guy that I really liked coming out of the draft. And, and I do think that there's a really solid starting pitcher in there. It's just about how consistent he can be. And the execution of, again, the fastball specifically the rest of the way. So Ty Madden, 
Let's see what we got in him. And uh, yeah, man, like the, we're we're a game under 500 going into this ball game on Monday night at 8, 10 p.m. Eastern time. The post-trade deadline Tigers have been playing really well. Um, I can remember coming on here post-deadline and uh, a couple of times and saying this could get and might even get really ugly really quickly, right? Because we traded everybody away. The offense hasn't been great. Uh, they're going to call up a lot of like younger players or maybe like journeymen, like who knows? I don't anticipate this to go very well. And they have absolutely played much better than I ever would have anticipated in the month of August. And so that is a big credit to the front office, the coaching staff, and most importantly, the players. Um, the, the fact that they are a game within 500, if you would have asked me in late June or early July, if this team ever would have sniffed 500 again, I would have said absolutely not. So vibes are high. Not only are they uh, playing for you know a 500 record again on Monday, they are also still one of the youngest teams in baseball. They have one of, if not the youngest lineup in baseball, and they are still winning games. That's beautiful. That is exactly what best case scenario is and what we talked about best case scenario being the remainder of, of the way after the deadline. Thanks for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every single day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day. And we will, of course, be back tomorrow. All right. Let's uh let's play 500 ball. Hey, okay? why not? Peace and love. Go to therapy's dope. I'll catch you all tomorrow, baby. Go Tigers.